Shalom. This is your brother Shamak. I have the great millstone, Atlanta Camp. Before I get started, I want to give all the glory, infinite praises unto Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Rachak Wadash, Yahweh being the Heavenly Father's true name, and Yahweh Shai, which is only begotten Son's true name, whom the world incorrectly calls God and Jesus Christ. Okay, and double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone who teach and rule well. And Shalom taught sincere brothers that's pushing teaching his truth worldwide. And Shalom taught sincere listeners and you sincere believers. All right, receive this comment here on a recent video of mine. And as it reads, it says, Shalom, I have a question. Should Hanukkah be recognized? If it's the Lord's will, can you do a breakdown? Praise the Most High, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, and just to quickly answer that question, yes. All right, because the scripture speak speaks of this of these times, man. All right, and it speaks of, and it speaks of the event, and it commands us to basically rehearse the righteous acts. You know, instead of you know what the people are doing today is uh, rehearsing the white man's uh, pagan holidays of Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. All right, we should be rehearsing Hanukkah. You know, as a time of of November twenty eighth of this year twenty twenty one to December sixth. Okay, and I also want to get a few before grabbing the scriptures. Just want a quick, uh, just quick meanings and, and quick background concerning Hanukkah. All right, and this is, and this is scriptural and this is history. All right, and it was also what prophecy that have that has come to pass. Okay, which is simply show that the Bible is a true book. All right, it's a history book. It's a prophetic book. Okay, and it's true. So this is Hanukkah. It's a quick, just a quick Google search of Hanukkah. It says Hanukkah, also known as the Festival of Lights. Is a Jewish festival commemorating the recovery of Jerusalem and so subsequent rededication. That's what the word Hanukkah means is dedication. It says rededication of the second temple at the beginning of the Maccabean revolt against against the Seleucid Empire in the second century BCE. All right. And the scripture is going to back this up. All right. Do you see it from here on Wikipedia? All right. We didn't, you know, uh, the blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. As a, as a true Hebrew Israelites, according to the Bible, hey, we didn't write this, man. All right. We didn't write this, you know, this this Wikipedia search. No, man, this was this is going to show that the Bible is true. All right. This is going to simply show that the Bible is true. And I know it mentioned the Maccabean revolt in the Seleucid Empire. So I wanted to get both of those terms. I get the uh, I simply just quickly get the Seleucid Empire. It says Seleucid Empire was a Greek state. In Western Asia during the Hellenistic period that existed from 312 BC to 63 BC, the Seleucid Empire was founded by, by Seleucus, the first Nicator, following the, the, the division of the Macedonian Empire that existed previously, which had been founded by Alexander the Great. All right, because Alexander the, the Great, man, also known as Alexander the Greek, all right, he led, 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 that, um, led that captivity, man, led that rulership over the Israelites. Okay, which we were in slavery, man. We were, we were captive to the Greeks. Okay, and I also want to get a quick, of course, a quick background for uh, the Maccabean Revolt, which is another term that was used in the Hanukkah search. It says the Maccabean Revolt was a Jewish rebellion <clears throat> led by the Maccabees against the Seleucid Empire and against Hellenistic influence on Jewish life. Hellenistic, why? All right, because we were Hellenized and we and were take and were, were like the word used influence. We were influenced to leave off our our original customs and traditions of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai as Hebrew Israelites and take on the customs of who the Greeks, man, who were captive of. All right, the same way as we're in America today and we're taking on the same uh, wicked and evil traditions of of the Americans, man. Their holidays, Thanksgiving, you know, uh, Christmas. All right, uh, what Halloween. All right, that same influence, that same Hellenistic influence, man, that relates to, to this very day that we're in right now. All right, it says the main phase of the revolt lasted from 167 to 160 BCE, and it ended with the Seleucids in control of the country, but conflict between the Maccabees, Hellenized Jews, and the Seleucids continued until 134 BCE. All right, I'm going to see. It says in it, with the Maccabees attaining independence by the end. All right. So, yeah, that's the point I wanted to hit. It says with the Maccabees attaining independence by the end. All right. Yeah, that's 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 the main part I wanted to hit. All right. And this search goes into, uh, it, gave, it gave a great list of, of its commanders and leaders of, of both 
of both the Maccabees and the Seleucid Empire. And the scripture is going to hit on these same names, man. The scripture is going to hit on these same names. All right. So this going this is simply show, you know, that these are real people. You know, these are real people and that the Bible is true. It's no way around history, man. It's no way around it. Okay. The so-called white man is going to tell you that these are they, these were real people. Antiochus, all right, Gorgias, Lysus, you know, and the scriptures mention these same very names, man. All right, so without further ado, and Lord willing, this lesson be edifying as well concerning Hanukkah, concerning the Feast of Dedication. But this is First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 1. And you know, it, the, the Hanukkah is, it mentioned Alexander the Great, you know, and what is it is going to mention here? It says, First Mac, Maccabees chapter 1, verse 1, and it really says, and it happened. After that, Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. All right. So this is that start of that Greek captivity, man, because the Greeks, all right, basically took over or, or conquered the media Persian Empire. All right. Which we, which were the Israelites were held captive, uh, um, which, which, you know, the Israelites were held slaves under that empire as well man all right it says verse two and made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth all right so that went directly into it alexander the great all right simply put in the scriptures okay there's no way around it man all right but i'm going down where it goes and it backs up that point of the hellenized jews man we, we were brought we were in that influence of being taken away from our our true power man Okay, and we went off. We were, we committed evil. We committed treason against Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, the heavenly Father in the, in the name of the Son. All right, so this is First Maccabees chapter one verse ten, and it reads, "And there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, son of Antiochus the king, or Antiochus." It says, "Who had been in hostage at Rome, and he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventy year of the kingdom of the Greeks." So Alice after. Or basically, after he after uh, succeeding Alexander the Great, there came Antiochus. All right, verse eleven it says, "In those days went there out of Israel wicked men, who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us, for since we departed from them, we had much sorrow.' All right, so you 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 also had of the black Spanish and Native Americans in the, in that land in that land of Greece. All right, basically agreeing and consenting." With the with the um with the heathen man these other nations all right with Esau all right but it says uh verse twelve and it says so this device pleased them well then certain of the people were were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen all right so there you had Hellenized Jews man. That that just that's that just completely agreed with Alexander the Great and, and Antiochus, all right, and just and just took on the customs of the heathen, the same way our people are doing right now by taking on the customs of, the customs of Americans, man, all right, or or of America, I should say. And I'm going down to get more details of the Hellenization period concerning uh, Antiochus, but so this is First Maccabees chapter one verse forty one, and it's made very clear. All right, it's made very clear. So it reads, it says, Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and everyone should leave his laws. So all so all the he that agreed according to the commandment of the king. All right. So this is this is, this concerned other nations as well, man. And they and they took heed to what King Antiochus, all right, his in his commandments. Verse 43. It says, yeah, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. All right. So you, hey, we were, we hey, committed evil. You know, it says, verse 44, it says, for the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple and that they should profane the Sabbath, Sabbaths and festival days. And pollute the sanctuary and holy temple. I mean, the holy people. All right. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice with swine's flesh and unclean beasts that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation to the end that they might, 
it says to the end. So this what this was a, this what Antiochus this was this was his ultimate goal for the Israelites to forget, you know, our to for us to forget our true customs and traditions. All right, this was the it says to the end they might forget the law and change all the ordinances, and whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. All right, so that that should put in perspective the dangerous times that that took place in history concerning our forefathers, man, concerning, you know, our lineage, man, okay, and our heritage, all right? And the integrity that it took for the the, the faithful men of the Maccabees, man, all right, of the Maccabean revolt, that, it, that how much pressure it took, and, and truly faith, faith in Yahweh, man, faith in Yahweh, man, all right, and the, and the heavenly in the heavenly father, okay? It took, them, it took a lot of courage for them to come up against this, uh, this this rulership basically, man, up against Alexander the Greek, or Alexander the Great, or, and also and Antiochus. All right. So going and flowing into the next chapter, we have you will have uh, Mattathias. All right. Basically, beginning that spirit of the of the rebellion of the revolt. All right. So this is First Maccabees chapter two, verse one. It says, "In those days arose Mattathias, the son of John, the son of Simeon, a priest of the son of Harib." From a Jerusalem and dwelt in Modin, and he had five sons: Jonathan, called Cadis; Simon, called Thassi; Thassi, so like if I mispronounce that, it says verse forty. Judas, who was called Maccabees, uh, verse five. Verse five. Alizar, called Arabian, and Jonathan, who was surnamed Apos. All right, so you had those those sons, and it basically is going, it's going to show. Well, the scripture is going to simply show that Mattathias. All right, led that rebellion revolt, okay? And it's going to go into it in verses, um, yeah, verses 17, all right? So you had that, you had that, ta that takeover by Alexander the Great, uh, Alexander the Great taking over the Medio Persian Empire, all right? And, and also leading on with, um, uh, Antiochus succeeding Alexander the Great and, and fulfilling and, and basically coming down harsher and more, and more, um, Basically, more draconian, or you know, yeah, very much more, more harsh up, upon the Israelites, man. Just to put it simple and plain. But this is First Maccabees chapter two, verse seventeen. Just to go into that Mattathias, his his rebellion, that rebellion spirit, man, that started up that Maccabean revolt. Verse seventeen it says, "Then answered the king's officers and said to Mattathias on this wise, thou art an ruler and an honorable and great man in this city, and strengthened with sons and brethren." Now, therefore, come thou first and fulfill the king's commandment, like as all the heathen have done. Yeah, in the men of Judah also, and such as remain at Jerusalem. So that, you know, they're trying to come in with that convincing spirit, as it, as it mentioned in, in, the, in the first chapter. All right. It says, so shall thou and thy house be in the number of the king's friends. <laughs> and thou and thy children shall be honored with silver and gold and, and with many rewards. So there, you know, they're here. Hellenized Jews that didn't maintain their integrity, but what they wanted, what the silver and the gold and the, and the benefits of that Greek kingdom, man. All right, but what, what? Verse verse nineteen says. Then Mattathias answered and spake with a loud voice. Though all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him and fall away every one from the religion of their fathers and give consent to his commandments, yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of our fathers. Verse 21 says, God forbid that we should forsake the law and the ordinances. We would not hearken to the king's word to go from our religion either on the right hand or the left. So he ate Mattathias left no gray area, man. He, he may hit man maintain that integrity. You know, it says uh, verse 23 says now when he had left speaking these words, there came one of the Jews in the sight of all to sacrifice on the altar, which is at Modin, according to the king's uh, according to the king's commandment. Verse 24 says, which thing when Mattathias saw, he was inflamed with zeal and his reins trembled. Neither could he forbear to show his anger according to judgment. Wherefore, he ran and slew him upon the altar. Also, the king's commissioner who compelled men to sacrifice, he killed at that time in the altar he pulled down. All right. So Mattathias, was, they, these was very warlike men. These were mighty men. OK, these weren't these weren't just your regular you know, day to day, nine to five, you know, nine to five uh, walking Israelites, man. No, these were mighty men, powerful, you know, 
you know, very, very uh, fearful to even look at, you know. So I'm going to go on down within this chapter and it's going to go into. Um, we're going down further down into the, the timeline. Let me highlight. Yeah, let me highlight this. OK, going on down. Basically, Mattathias. After the death of Mattathias, basically his son Judas took over his stead, man, and led the people to battle against these Greeks, man, and led that Maccabean revolt that is still known to be, and to be held in remembrance to this very day that we're living in right now, all right? So this is First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 35, which would be known as what? Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication. And the description is going to simply show why. Just giving a quick, just giving, you know, a background and history of what was taking place. All right, this first, and it's not, you know, it's not nothing deep or anything. It's just, it's just, it's just simply what happened. This is First Maccabees chapter two, verse thirty-five. You know what? No, let me go on down. Let me go on down to. Oh yeah, let me go on down to. Uh... You know what? Let me, yeah, let me go on down. To now, let me get the part where they were going to the sanctuary. Salaki, let me go back up. How about that? Yeah. All right, let me go back up. Yeah, let me get let me get this part. This first Maccabees chapter two. Mm, let me go. Um, I'm starting verse nine. I'm gonna go back up. First Maccabees chapter two, verse nine says, "Her glorious vessels are carried away into captivity, into slavery. Her infants are slain in the streets. Her young men with the sword of the enemy." What nation have not had a part in her kingdom and got them her spoils? All her ornaments are taken away of a free woman. She has become a bond slave. And behold, our sanctuary, even our beauty and our glory is laid waste and the Gentiles have profaned it. All right. I, de I definitely don't want to miss this part is because that's the whole point of the rededication, man. All right. Of, of Hanukkah, because the, these these Gentiles, these heathen nations, these Greeks, all right, under under this Greek captivity, man, they profaned our temple. They profaned our sanctuary. All right. It says, verse 13 says, To what end, therefore, shall we live any longer? Then Mattathias and his sons rent their clothes and put on sackcloth and mourned very sore. All right. And that led to, you know, Mattathias even going more into that rebellion type spirit. All right. With the verses I previous, previously read, definitely didn't want to miss that part of them. Basically, basically profaning the temple, you know, basically fulfilling Antiochus' wishes, man. All right. And that influence that it mentioned, you know, on Google. All right. And I carry it down. Let me see if I wanted to get. Yeah, I, I, I read that. So let me, let me carry it on with Judas in the, in the next chapter when he rose up in his father's stead. His father, of course, being Mattathias, it says, First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 1. It says, then his son Judas, called Maccabees, rose up in his stead. Let me go on down. All right. This is show that, that Judas fulfilled that revolt in that battle, man. All right. And these, are, these were men of integrity. You know, these are, these are accounts. You know, the scriptures speak about with Romans 15 and 4. These things were written for our learning. You know, these scriptures were written for our learning, man. So we look on these, these four, our forefathers and these men. All right, and we and we and we try to examine ourselves whether we be in the faith, man. Whether we gonna stand boldness for Yahweh Bashim Shai when these evil times are approaching in these evil in these days that we're living in right now, okay? We keep we're looking to keep that same integrity, man. All right, in that same faith. This is First Maccabees chapter three. Um, I go. To, I started verse seventeen. Verse seventeen says, "Who, when they saw the host coming to meet them, said unto Judas." How shall we be able, being so few, to fight against so great a multitude and so strong, seeing we are ready to faint with fasting all this day? Verse 18, unto whom Judas answered, It is no hard matter for many to be shut up in the hands of a few, and with the, mo and with the power of heaven it is all one, to deliver with a great multitude or a small company. All right, so Judas, he's basically exhorting and encouraging those that, you know, that may be seeming, you know, weak in a time of war. Because these were very, you know, these were, we, these were high-pressured uh, high times, man, against these Greeks, man. These were, this is a, this is a powerful kingdom, all right? And it's mentioned on Wikipedia. It's mentioned on Google. It's mentioned in the so-called white man's records, man. And it's going, and it simply backs up the scriptures. This simply shows that the Bible is true, 
All right. Verse uh, verse 19 says, For the victory of the battle stand of night in the multitude of an host, but strength cometh from heaven. So the Judas understood that, man, this is all the Lord is doing. If it's the Lord's will for us to win this battle, we're going to win the battle. All right. Whether we have whether we have a large number or a small number. Simple as that. Verse 20. They come against us in much pride and iniquity to destroy us and our wives and children and to spoil us. But we fight for our lives and our laws. So, yeah, you stand for something or, you you know. When you when you don't you know when you don't stand for anything you you fall for anything man, all right verse twenty two it says wherefore the Lord Himself will overthrow them before our face and as for you be ye not afraid of them all right so Judas a hey, <laughs> he was in that mighty spirit he had faith you know he had faith in Yahweh man he had faith in the power of the Israelites okay and the God of, of God of Israel man simple as that all right and he had and he had he fulfilled that battle all right. And it's going to carry on into the the next chapter, all right. And this is, I'm pretty sure I'm going to conclude with this chapter here, all right, because this is this is surely, you know, basically bring the point all the way home or full circle concerning Hanukkah and concerning the feast of dedication. All right, so this is First Maccabees chapter four verse one. Then took Gorgias five thousand footmen, and this is that same name that I mentioned or it listed here in um within Wikipedia under the Maccabean revolt. Of the commanders and, and leaders of the Seleucid Empire. And it, it, the scripture just mentioned Gorgias. And there you have it, man. Gorgias. All right. So back to the uh, first Maccabees chapter 4. It reads, says, then took Gorgias. So you understand that he's on the he's on the side of the Seleucid Empire. He's, look, they're going into that battle. They're going into that war. It says, then took Gorgias 5,000 footmen and a 1,000 of the best horsemen and removed out of the camp by night. To the end, he might rush in upon the camp of the Jews and smite them suddenly. And the men of the fortress were his guides. All right. So this is going, this is going into that battle. All right. It says verse 17. And this is Judas. This is going to go into Judas. All right. It's Judas basically versus Gorgias, man. And it says, but, you know, basically, you know, the, the Maccabean revolt against the Greek uh, against the Greek empire. And it says, or the Seleucid empire, I should say. And it says, and said to the people, be not greedy of the spoil inasmuch as there is a battle before us. And Gorgias and his hosts are here by us in the mountain. But stand ye now against our enemies and overcome them. And after this, ye may boldly take the spoils. As Judas was yet speaking these words, there appeared a part of them looking out of the mountain. Who when they, it says verse 20, who when they perceived that the Jews had put their host to flight and were burning the tents. For the smoke that was seen declared what, what was done. All right, so this is in the midst of battle. Judas done already, they done already put, you know, uh, or beat a whole army, man. Put them to flight. You, you, you know, you taking over an army in, in the midst of war. When you see that you're that you're losing, hey, you you take off, man. You take flight. Fight or flight, man. You know, you either going to fight and, you know, live with the consequences or get up out of there, man. And in, in, the, in, Mac, in the Maccabean revolt, Judas and his army... He he had the heathen and these other nations, and he had them scattered, you know? And then what? Gorgias and his and his men, they seen that from where they was at, man, on the mountain. They seen that. And they seen the smoke and they seen the burning of tents. It says, For the smoke that was seen declared what was done. It showed what was done, man. Verse 21 says, When they it's like it, when therefore they perceived these things, they were so afraid, and seeing also the host of Judas in the plain ready to fight. So these were mighty men. They like, man, hell no, we want no smoke. They literally didn't. They literally did not want any smoke, man. That's real, man. They were so afraid. Like, no, nah, I'm not trying to die. No, nah, that's not it. But what? Look what happened. Says verse twenty two. They fled everyone into the land of the strangers. Then Judas returned to the spoil, to spoil the tents where they got much gold and silver and blue silk and purple of the sea and great riches. So they gained. They got resources, man. When you win a battle, you take. You take what was in that land. You know. Verse 24, after this, they went home and sung a song of thanksgiving, man, giving thanks to who? Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And this time, Yahweh says, and praise the Lord in heaven, because it is good, because his mercy endure forever. Thus, Israel had had a great deliverance that day. All right, so when, we come, when we're living in this time now, and when Hanukkah comes around this time, in this ninth month, what this chapter is going to go into as well, we're here to remembrance. Or remember, I should say, that great deliverance, uh, that great deliverance day. All right, with Judas and his army that were in the in the midst of the Greek captivity, man. All right. 
So this is first Maccabees chapter four, verse thirty five. Just going more down on, more down within the chapter in the timeline. It says, "Oh yeah, this is thirty five. It says now when Lysus saw his army t put to flight and the manliness of Judah's soldiers, and how they were ready to either to live or die violently, he went into Antioch." And gathered together a company of strangers, and having made his army greater than it was, he proposed to come again to in Judea. Then said Judas and his brethren, Behold, our enemies are discomfited. Let us go up to cleanse and dedicate the sanctuary. Upon this, all the hosts assembled to themselves together and went up into Mount Zion. So basically, that Lysus, which was another name, another name mentioned within these commanders and leaders of the Seleucid Empire. Lysus is going to go and go Gaius. And then you, of course, you have Antiochus the fourth Epiph Epiphanes. All right. But there you have it, man. These, these are these are real people, man. All right. And the scriptures speak of this. And the scriptures, and the scriptures uh, basically prophesied it, you know. So um, I'm going to go further, further more on down within the within the um, within the chapter. And this is basically basically uh, concluded. First Maccabees chapter four, verse fifty four. Look at what time and what day the heathen had profaned it, even in that was it dedicated with songs and citerns and harps and cymbals. Then all the people fell upon their faces, worshiping and praising the God of heaven who had given them good success. All right. Praising Yahweh, man, the heavenly father. Verse 56. And so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days and offered. So that's why I mentioned. And even they had it right. They had it correct within the Google search of Hanukkah. When you look, it says what? It says Sunday, November twenty eighth at evening to Monday, December sixth at evening. Man, they had the they had the date correct, all right? Because you have those pretenders, man, pretending those those fake Israelites pretending to be us, man, today over in our land right now, and they're holding this same, all right? This basically this this feast day, this holy feast day, man, and it's truly a mocking to the true Israelites, all right? But back to the point. Well, verse, um, what's that? Uh, verse 56 says, it says, and so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days and offered burnt offerings with gladness and sacrificed the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. So we were, when we, when we come around this time and think of, of Hanukkah and think of that piece of dedication, it's a sacrifice of deliverance and praise, man. So that's what we had gathered in a fellowship uh, amongst ourselves and praise and think upon that deliverance, man, of that time. Verse 57 says that it says they all it's like it. They decked also the forefront of the temple with crowns of gold and with shields and the gates and the chambers. They renewed and hanged doors upon them. Thus was their very great gladness among the people for that the reproach of the heathen was put away. Verse 59. Moreover, Judas and his brethren with the whole congregation of Israel ordained that the days of the dedication of the altar shall be kept in their season from year to year. By the space of eight days from the five and twentieth day of the month of Kaslu with mirth and gladness. All right. And Kaslu is going basically going into that ninth month. All right. Going into the ninth month. So when you rehearse uh, or recognize Hanukkah, it's, it's to be rehearsed as a righteous act within the ninth month of the year. And some may ask, well, aren't we in the eleventh month with it being November? Which but that would be incorrect, man. This is going. We are going. We're observe our times and seasons based upon the moon. All right. With, with our months. The word month is, is karash, which means moon. All right. Simply that's is simply to simply show that, you know, our time is based off the moon, man. Out the lunar calendar is uh, in ancient times, man. All right. And we understand that the so-called white man being a devil, that he is a great deceiver and a great liar, that he changed the times pertaining to, to Daniel chapter eight, verse 25. All right. Cause you think of the 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 prefixes of, you know, I just type it in September prefix, what seven, but what in in, in this calendar of the uh, the Julian or Gregorian calendar is what the ninth month. Then you have October prefix what eight November. Let me go November, in the Latin mean, it means new, and it going down. You can say it says in the Latin it says nine a number uses a prefix. So and then of course December prefix meaning ten. 
So this is simply so that we are we we're truly in the ninth month, man. All right, and this is all of course done through faith. All right, and done you know it's 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 purely done through faith, man. A rehearsing these righteous acts in this time of right now, and it's a memorial for that deliverance of the Maccabean revolt. All right, and it's very scriptural. So yes, it is to be recognized, man. Okay, so Lord willing. You know, that'll cover it concerning, you know, Alexander the Great and, and Antiochus with their, you know, their evil ways and evil doings over the Israelites and their captivity, man, showed Mattathias rebellion, you know, that, that put that warlike and rebellion spirit within the Israelites and it was fulfilled through his son Judas, all right, and this great army and it, and it led to basically the what, to uh, the fulfillment of the uh, the rededication of the temple, all right, where we worship Yahweh, all right, where we, where we worship our power, man. All right, and sent up offerings and you know and um and our own sacrifices for our faith, man, and for our families. So Lord willing, know that lesson was edifying and exhorting and encouraging to you, sincere believers and you, sincere listeners. All right, I want to end off by giving all the glory, infinite praises unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, All right, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who teach and rule well. All right, Shalom, Shalom, keep the faith.